Ms. Rao, I worry uh, less about what you wrote at Yale years ago than whose interests you serve right now at OIRA and how that will move over uh, with you into the D.C. Circuit Court if you are confirmed. Uh, we hear a lot in this committee and uh, in the press about how uh, the president is trying to push through lots of conservative judges. I actually don't see much conservatism in those judges. What I see is judges who are predictably likely to rule for specific big special interests. And um, you see the hands of those special interests in the process of selection. We'd like to know more about it, but the Federalist Society doesn't disclose its donors very clearly. We do know from the White House that uh, the White House said that it insourced, that's their word, insourced the Federalist Society to make their selection of the last Supreme Court nominee. We then see a confirmation process that is just rotten with dark money. One donor, nearly $18 million. We don't know who that donor is. And then we see these same groups turning up in front of the courts, circuit court, Supreme Court, uh, as amici. It's not always easy to figure out who's behind the amici because the rules are very vague about disclosure, even in the court. It's probably the worst policed form of influence seeking in our government right now. Um, but what I see over and over again is an instinct to protect the role of dark money, because dark money is the vehicle for all these other powers. Uh, I see an instinct to protect big polluters at all costs, as if there's no public on the other side of the regulatory balance. The firearms lobby, a uh, big instinct to uh, protect them and a very strong lean in favor of corporate political powers and against the accountability of corporations either to an honest, knowledgeable regulator or to a court or a jury. Now, the courts and juries were kind of set up to deal with this problem because the Founding Fathers knew about special interest influence in legislatures and in the executive branch. Um, but what I see from the courts is a desire to move as many questions as possible to those areas where the special interests have the most power. And I think that's a matter of real concern. What makes me say that this is not a conservative judicial doctrine is that when you look at conservative judicial doctrines, they include things like respect for the will of elected branches, like judicial modesty, narrowing the decision to what's least required to decide, stare decisis, respect for precedent, and that famous uh, Scaliaism, originalism. In various cases, every single one of these so-called conservative judicial doctrines has been completely run over in the path to delivering a win for the big donor interest. So it's hard for me to align conservative judicial doctrine with what's going on here, which is why I say these aren't conservative judges any longer. This is basically an effort to capture the court for big special interests with judges who will rule predictably for those big interests. Um, time will tell in your case. There's nothing I can ask you to answer here now that will divulge that you're going to go in and put your finger on the side of the big polluters. You're going to put your thumb on the scales for the firearms industry. You're going to help corporations avoid accountability or any of that. But time will tell. And time is already telling at the Supreme Court. And that's what I want to make a record of here today. The Supreme Court is now up to, I want to say, 73 partisan decisions, five to four, with Republicans and Democrats allied on different kinds uh, in the Ch Chief Justice Roberts' tenure. So call them the Roberts Five, uh, the activist Republicans, 73 decisions in which they're, they've had a particularly important issue for Republican interests in front of them. And in all of those partisan five to four decisions, the big donor interest won. 73 to zero. This from a guy who said he was calling balls and strikes. Give me a break. Helping Republicans win at the polls has been a constant theme of the court, whether it's hurting unions or helping dark money or allowing voter suppression or protecting and enshrining gerrymandering, helping corporations avoid accountability, totally with no mention of the Seventh Amendment, with regard to protection from their employers who might be discriminated against, consumers who might be injured, or other parties injured by their actions. 
And then, of course, there are the big donor interest wins for polluters and for the gun lobby that just get thrown their way almost like it's a Christmas present. So what I see is a court that is predictably likely, indeed infallibly likely in these five to four decisions, to vote for big Republican donor interests. And I think it's time we clean that mess up. And I think that that is, going to, in the long run, going to do a real disservice to our courts to have a record like that of having uh, so almost slavishly followed those interests in those circumstances. So I hope you'll do a lot better if you get on the court and not just fall into that rut.